What's going on? Welcome to Ales and Strange Tales. We are your hosts, Chris Moyers and Dan Stickney. This is a new podcast where we crack open a beer or two and share our listeners' tales and experiences of the supernatural, paranormal, and just plain weird. Plus, we'll feature local folklore, interviews, and our own stories and adventures. So sit back, pour yourself a drink, and dive into the strange with us. As my esteemed co-host said, this is the first podcast. Did you say that? I don't even know. No, Did you actually say that? No. Nope. <laughs> well, it is our first podcast, just so you guys know, and I'm sure you do know because it says one on the podcast. <laughs> um, Chris, that's Dan, and it's a supernatural, to a certain degree, podcast. We're just doing weird stories in general, but I think we're going to probably lean towards more supernatural type stuff. But you also wanted to touch on dreams too, correct? Yeah. Any weird dreams. Anything just like weird. freak you out. Yeah, weird dream. Anything weird happening to you. And we're going to have a number to call in. So we want stories from the audience. So if you have anything weird, call it in, email us the story, whatever you want to do. But just get your stories to us and we'll put them on the air. Our email is ales, the letter N, strange tales at gmail.com. Ales and strange tales at gmail.com. So there you go on that. And it is Ales and Strange Tales. We are drinking ales now. Let's introduce our ales today. Uh, go for it, Dan. Uh, today I got me some fresh haze IPA from Deschutes. I believe they're out of I got Oregon. S- Where is it? Oregon. Oregon, nice. I have Samuel Adams Wicked Hazy Juicy New England IPA. It's pretty good. It's not too bad. Um, so today we're going to touch on some of our cousins stories that they told us and uh i think we're gonna touch on one of our friends stories yeah our friend uh christine at uh marseilles marseilles illinois not too far from where we are stuff happening at our old house yeah we're located in oswego illinois if anyone gives a shit so that's where (laughs) we are and i guess we'll just hop right into it and just see how the flow goes and we're gonna start with dan and his cousin take it away dan well uh she's got a few little Deals that happened uh, at a couple cemeteries and some weird stuff going on at a house she just recently moved into. So here we go. So I have a story back when I was in high school. I was visiting a cemetery with a few friends. We get out of the van and walk around and start taking pictures to try and capture orbs or shadows or something. But we weren't getting anything. So the last picture we took was with the flash. In the light from the flash, you could see two eyes and a mouth. It looked as if the mouth was open. Right at that moment, the car died. The headlights and the radio just shut off. We all scream and ran back to the van, started it back up and got out of there. That's creepy. She doesn't say, you know, how old the van was. It'd be a crazy coincidence if it just shut off. You know? Yeah, it just shut off by an door, but if it's an older van, it's, it's a possibility, yeah, but it is a crazy coincidence right. if that's what happened. Um, another short instance at a cemetery, I was out with my sister visiting one of my buddies that passed away in a car accident. It kind of felt like someone was watching, so I turned my head and saw these two red eyes glaring back at me. I looked at my sister and told her we have to leave now. I turned back for another look, but the eyes were gone. Gone, wow. I don't know what animal has red eyes. I'm, I'm colorblind, so I have no idea either. <laughs> I was going to say owl, but I don't, I don't think they're yeah, red Yeah, are they red? Either. I have no idea if they are. I know they probably reflect a little bit with light. Yeah, it could it, be. But I don't know what color it would be, but either way, that'd scare the hell out of me. Yeah, right? I'd <laughs> get out of there. And uh, lastly, she writes... Recently, I moved into my own place with my family, and I noticed there's this little boy's voice that would follow me wherever I went. It would keep saying, Mommy, and wake up, and help. My kids can talk, but it's none of their voices. It happens in the middle of the night when everyone is sleeping, and it wakes me up every damn time. I don't know who's following me, but it sounds like a little boy, maybe 12 years old. My son is seven, so it can't be him. Yeah, I guess there's a why difference. would he be asking for help and not be telling her, you know? Right, and I think a mother knows her son's voice, you know? <laughs> yeah, you, you would think so, and asking for help, that's just creepy. 
little know kids, what you know, little kid voices just they creep me out on movies. Yeah, they I never creep me out them, immensely. Yeah, yeah. That would creep I me can't out. handle that shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's all she sent us. Thank you, Ariel. Thank you very much, Ariel. Very interesting stuff. Well, I will jump into my cousin's story. It's Nicholas. He's a younger cousin of mine. He's out of Woodstock or Cary. It's right by each other. It's northern Illinois. It's about an hour and a half from where we are. Um, and let's just get right into it. Woodstock. Isn't that Groundhog's Day? They did film Groundhog Day. <laughs> yeah, there, yeah. I thought. Sorry. And the, I've been to that town, and it kind of there's some of the features look the same, but yeah. uh, the restaurant's not there anymore. I think it's like a coffee house now or something. Huh. But anyway, here goes Nicholas's story. This is just a part of it. I'm not going to read the whole thing because there's multiple things all together. I'm just going to read a little portion of it, and we'll touch more on it in a later episode. But my cousin Nick's story, here we go. Both my sister and I have always been into the supernatural as far back as I can remember. We'd always swap little experiences with each other, but most of them really came from her. Like about our cat that pawed at the door, but later to find out he was fast asleep somewhere. Another were the bathroom doorknob turning, thinking it was my older sister, but she was in the basement. All of these little stories are mostly explainable, but nonetheless, when you're a kid, they're perfectly true. As for me, wait, what did he say? As for me, <laughs> I would mostly see shadows and things in the corner of my eye. But there's one experience that kind of stuck with me. I was maybe 10 years old, walking to my house during the day, and what sounded like was in my head, I heard a woman's faint scream that instantly turned loud, like somebody cranked the volume up on a radio. Never told anybody and never really thought anything of it, but throughout the rest of my childhood, I think about it here and there. After that, for a long time for me, nothing happened but seeing flashes and shadows and things of that nature. The older we got, we would then always talk about the stars and swap our little stories and theories about what it was. We'd lay in the yard and talk about aliens and ask each other questions about the universe and that stuck with me until today. Fast forward a few years, this little story is a classic for us and will forever creep into thought every now and again. One night around midnight, my two sisters, our friend and I, decided to go for a walk down the street, a few minutes to our elementary school. It was cool because behind the school was a massive hill that stretched the entire length of it. At the foot of the hill was a playground, which was our destination that night and a small asphalt square with a drive leading up to it from the far side of the building. Pretty descriptive on the location yeah, there. <laughs> <laughs> so we got up to the playground and we all noticed at the same time something at the top of the hill. Looked like a 15 foot wide little building with castle blocking on top. Weird. And apparently that's never there. <laughs> and it disappeared, I guess, when we'll find out later in the story. Matched with two people standing about waist height to the top of the blocking. A gloomy black outline with a grayish background. They were waving their arms like somebody trying to get our attention, but it almost looked like they were cardboard cutouts with hinges at the shoulders and someone with strings waving their arms in slow motion. Weird. That is fucking weird. <laughs> I don't know what they're seeing there. <laughs> and they were yelling help. So my oldest sister wanted to run up there and see what was, see what was going on, but we all told her not to. Understandable. We got spooked and ran home, got our parents, and we drove back. Took a total of 10 minutes, maybe. But when we got back in my mom's truck along the side drive leading to the asphalt square, there was nothing there. Completely gone. Weird. Completely gone. Still to this day, nobody believes us, and I wish we would have ran up that hill. And actually, just recently, I was reading stories to my oldest sister about times people think they were in a different dimension. And one of them were these group of kids that went into a forest and saw a castle. Ran and came back with their parents and it was gone. We looked at each other and was like, no way. <laughs> so a peek from another dimension or ghost. I don't know. Nobody believes us but us anyways. So I've heard stories about like structures in the woods appearing and people see like a yeah. house. Like I've a bachelor's grove for an example. Right. They'd see it and then they come back and it's not there anymore. So it's not unheard of that yeah. these things happen to people. It's a strange thing. It, it's, it's a castle. Yeah, it's a castle, <laughs> and they actually saw people waving for help. Yeah. You know, that's just weird. And I believe them, so right, I don't know. know what they saw or what happened, but... They saw something. They saw something out there, and that's fucking weird. <laughs> so we're going to jump back to Dan, and we have a story from our good friend Christine, correct? Yep, she's out of Marseilles, and this was all at her ex-husband's house. It was built in 1908. 
she says, I can never sleep there. I don't know how I did it for so long. I remember one of our first times that we were just hanging out there. We were watching TV upstairs in his bedroom, which was across the hall from the bathroom. There was a loud noise coming from the bathroom. The plastic cup that he kept on his sink was across the floor like someone threw it. Weird. It could be a draft or something. Could be a draft, but, but throwing it, that's quite the draft. Yeah, it'd be a hell of a draft to get it across the room. <laughs> uh, there were many times at night when we were laying in bed to go to sleep. I would freak out because it felt like someone just sat right next to me. Yeah, like I got no explanation. There's nothing that could explain it. That, that would creep me out too, though. Big time. Another time, one of the carved wooden masks we got from Chichen Itza, Mexico, that was hanging on the wall, not just fell off, but flew off and broke. So she's got lots of things flying around her house now. Yeah. Dang, Maybe some that. weird uh, Mexican cursing. Yeah, who knows, <laughs> man? Who knows? Yeah. And I'm wondering, did it all start happening when she got the mask? I was mask? just going to say, yeah, maybe. I have no idea. We'll have to ask her about that. She didn't say that. Um, there's more. Ryan was upstairs in our, her ex-husband in our bedroom putting laundry or something away. I remember we just got our first real Christmas tree. I was on the phone with my mom walking back and forth between the kitchen and the dining room where the tree was to water it. There was one of those push doors that swing open going into the kitchen. I remember every time I'd leave the kitchen and come back to it, the light would be off. Like you maybe motion light or something. Yeah, well, who knows? But she's kind of debunks that here. I'd tell my mom and be like, what the fuck? I never turned the light off. I was just trying to water the Christmas tree. The last time... <laughs> The last time I went back into the kitchen, the light was off, so I flipped it on, but it turned right back off on me. Oh, she saw it turn right back off. Wow. Right, yeah, she flipped the light on. Oh, that's interesting. I ran upstairs to Ryan and freaked out. You know, I don't know. it is an old house. Possible faulty Could be wiring. Fucked up wiring, who knows, but I would assume that it wasn't that if I was her, because you would see that on a more on a, on a regular basis. Yeah, I would, I would think so, yeah. So, and lastly, we were hanging out in what I called the Christmas room, <laughs> I guess, because of the colors. Was that green, red? Green, red. Maybe uh, Santa's around or something. But <laughs> <laughs> it, it was basically a small family room with couch, fallout bed, TV, and small bathroom. We had the door shut. Of course, we were watching a scary movie. All of a sudden, the doorknob turned and the door opened a bit. Plus, the sink would turn on by itself in the bathroom. Being an old house, faucets are faulty. I've seen it happen. They just slowly open. But I've never seen that happen, but I think it could be possible <laughs> with certain circumstances happening. But If it's an old faucet, I guess. With all these other uh, occurrences happening, I don't know, man. Yeah, but, and well, the door opening, the knob turning. I don't know. Yeah, all at once. Ain't no draft going to be doing it. Seems fishy to me. It seems like something's <laughs> happening in that house. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, she don't live in there anymore. Well, thankfully for her, I guess. But Yeah, did she ever say if there's anything happening where she lives now? I don't know. I don't think so. Well, at least it's not following her if that's the case. Right. That's good. That's all she uh, got for us today. Thank, Thank you very Christine. much, Christine. Well, that's fucking creepy, man. Right. Um, I was going to share my little experience the one and only weird thing that happened to me yeah this was years ago right you and a couple of our old this buddies. was like yeah shit 20 2000 2001 whoa that's yeah. a long time ago <laughs> but i'll never forget it we were with well two of our friends uh matt and mark one of which doesn't think it really happened but <laughs> yeah, I, I just asked him recently. He does not think this is true, but yeah. I, I wasn't Even there, though so he I was there and he saw it. it and either way, we uh we were walking somewhere around town over here in Oswego and just looking up in the sky and I I swear to whatever. <laughs> I see three UFOs, objects. They, these weren't lights. This was like, I don't know. It was uh I don't know. It was still light out but it was later in the day so you could still see 
it was blue skies I saw and there was three objects UFOs in a triangle formation really high up in the sky past the clouds you know back then 2000 drones weren't around at least we didn't know about drones military yet. probably had some yeah they had something up there but you but know. the uh the one in the center would stay still while the other two on the left and right would pan out left and right mm -hmm. like they were searching or something while the one would just stay in the middle and, th and then they would come back and form that triangle formation. This lasted, I don't know, man, like, it's so long, it was probably 10 minutes or something. We were watching this. Yeah, and I don't understand how our buddy Mark could just think it was an airplane, if <laughs> yeah. that's what happened. It was no freaking airplane, because even my, you know, Matt, he cooperates, and, like, a couple years later, I see this uh, program on TV Describing the same thing. Yeah, and I've in heard Illinois. descriptions about that too. Indiana and Illinois. Triangle formations. People have seen it all over the place. So I think something like that happened by O'Hare Airport. Yeah. I think I heard about. <clears throat> Some weird stuff happened over there. But yeah, we watched it for like, I don't know, 10, 10 minutes maybe. And then I think they just flew off or just disappeared. Yeah, I wouldn't stop watching until it was done. Because yeah. I'd be so engrossed in it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to yeah. stop. I was just motionless just yeah, watching. mesmerized my, by it. Like, what insane. the fuck is this? I'll never forget it. <laughs> See, I've never had anything like that. And I'm pretty jealous about you guys seeing <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, that's really the only thing <clears throat> I've ever experienced. No, I was in a car with my brother, my aunt, and my mom, and they saw lights, but I was like five or six. Uh -oh. This is in Florida. And they said it wasn't anything that they've seen before. It was lights in the sky, and it was like coming in and out. I don't exactly know what they said it was doing, but they were freaked out about it. We get back to my house, and my three uncles and my grandpa were there. We told them about it. I think this is how it happened. We told them about it. They got the machetes and shit, what? fucking <laughs> headbands on, just to get ready for some shit. They hopped in the back of a truck. The one was driving. My uncle's on the back of the truck, screaming with a machete in his hand. <laughs> Went driving in the woods looking for this fucking thing. Jesus. Because they, I think, I think they heard or noticed something too. Like when we got back to the house, and we told them that story. So they went searching for it. They didn't find anything, but I, all I remember is them and my uncle on the back with a machete screaming and driving into the fucking Go kill woods. me some aliens tonight. Yeah, like, I don't think that machete is going to be too uh, too helpful for you if that's what it is. But That's crazy. I do remember that, but nothing came of it, and I didn't see anything myself. I just heard oh, man. their uh, uh, recollection of it. But that's wild. Man. That is wild. That was funny. <laughs> but in the house now, I guess we can talk about my parents' house. Um, my mom, she claims uh, this house was built in like the 1860s, 1850s. Yeah. It's an old ass house. One of the first in us. Yeah, I think they say it's one of the first. And then my mom says she always sees like a black figure in the side of her eye when she's like washing dishes or something. <laughs> and then when I was younger, I'd come home and wake my mom up when I got home late and wiggle her, wiggle her toe awake and then uh, say, hey, I'm going to bed. Then she said one day something wiggled her toe just right after my gra grandfather died. And no one was there. It wasn't me. Because, yeah, I didn't hit the ground and army crawl out of the fucking room. Maybe a cat? Maybe a cat. I don't know. But she said she felt like I wiggled her toe like I normally yeah. do. And she woke up and no one was there. <laughs> Weird. Then where my room is, uh, above their room, they always hear something. When I'm not home, when I wasn't home at all, they just hear something running around up there. And it wasn't <laughs> an animal. It was because there's no animal up there. What it was you louder. It, it sounded room? like me walking around up there. Something <laughs> more substantial than a cat. <laughs> just just making a big ruckus, running around, like making tons of noise. No one's home upstairs. Weird. It's just my parents downstairs. They heard that on numerous occasions, but I've never seen anything. And there was an, there's a big spooky attic right connected to my room. Hung out in there, did a lot of fucking drugs and shit when I was younger <laughs> in there. Hanging out in there at night, watching Unsolved Mysteries. Nothing, <laughs> didn't see anything. I, hang out, I hung out in the basement a lot, didn't see anything down there. That's a creepy old basement. So I don't know. It is know. a creepy basement. I, uh, maybe I'm not sensitive to these things or something, but they've heard it and seen stuff. Hmm. I just haven't, so I don't know what's going on. Yeah. So that's the experiences me and Dan have, which mine is zero. His is this one experience 20 years ago. Yeah. But I think uh, later dates we'll be doing some paranormal investigations of our own. So we're looking to get more experiences yeah so we're hoping something will happen so we're gonna relay the information to you we'll bring recorders so you can listen to us experience it in real time 
Well, probably not in real time. It's not going to be live. <laughs> but we're going to post the recordings of it. Um, even if we don't find anything, you'll hear about it. I don't know how interesting it will be for you guys, but uh, we're going to post it. Let us know what you guys think in the comment section if there is one. By the way, did you see if there's a comment section on Anchor? I didn't yet, but they can always email us. Yeah, email us your comments. Ails and strange tales at Gmail. Gmail.com. Let us know what you think. Let us know how you might want us to change it to make it more interesting. We might heed your uh, feedback. feedback. We don't know. If we like it, we might. <laughs> If we don't like it, we'll say, we're not doing that. Go fuck yourself. No, we won't say that. <laughs> we won't say that. I might have to edit that. <laughs> but do we have anything else? Did you want to talk about the the alien scientist guy that we like watching? Or should we say that for a later date? We're at 20 minutes now. We're trying to make these podcasts 30 minutes. But <laughs> this is our first one, so it might be a little short. Dan, do you want to touch on that or do you want to save it? Well... I did uh, watch the, one of his, or a couple of his documents. Dr. Alan Greer, I think. Yeah, I hear a lot about him from you He's and our buddy. Very Vic. interesting and very interesting theories he, that he has. And not even theories, uh, he has uh, events that he hosts, some CE5. And now, is this to make contact with alien right. life forms? And they have videos and photos of apparently creatures that they contact via these UFOs that are talking to them subliminally or, you know, subconsciously. Yeah. It's crazy. That's what you and Nick were saying. And, and one it, of his, like, theories, though, even besides that point, which just kind of blows my mind, is, you know, people say they get abducted by aliens. Mm, yes. He says he's talked to a lot of people, and he believes that 90% of those is the government. The government? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Really? And they want to make extraterrestrials more of a threat when they're really not. They're just peaceful, conscious beings for the most part. So, I see. Well, the, and it, that works for the government because so then they, they can get more they money. They can do whatever the fuck they want. Yeah, to get more. Us, hey, let me take that tax that. money and so we can build spaceships and blow up these aliens. So he believes that they're actually getting abducted, but it's not from aliens no. it's from our own government just to scare people I, into hating and being afraid of these extra they like uh, using fear to their advantage we all yeah, in many see instances that happening. <laughs> yeah but there you, you check it out i think it's one of them is they're almost like kind of the same the one's called unexplained or no uh unacknowledged yeah i think unexplained is hosted by yeah. a fucking uh Star Trek captain. Yeah, what the hell? William Shatner. Like yeah. But it's unacknowledged as one of them. You can get it on Prime. And then I think the other, the newest one is Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind or something. Yeah, like that's that. what Nick keeps talking about. Yeah. He watched that. There's a little more detail of what they do in that one. How they contact these beings. Yeah, there's a brief description on that. From what I gathered, is it like a group meditation type thing to get in contact right. with them? You do yeah. it in a group. And get then... a certain state of mind and then you ask them to come or show or whatever and apparently they do <laughs> now i was talking to nick about this like would you be interested in trying this when we oh, go camping yeah. sometime Definitely. he says he is not interested in doing it whatsoever because he believes it so thoroughly that it would happen he doesn't want to do he it. doesn't want to do it what's i wrong forgot with what his reason was for not <laughs> wanting to do it but i said oh, why all you talk about is wanting to be in contact with right. him why would you not want to what do is he it? afraid of I can't remember what he said. You're I was scared of getting taken night. away. Take me away, man. But he <laughs> wants to be taken away, so I don't remember exactly why he says he doesn't want to do it. It doesn't make any sense. I think he said it was an ignorant thing to want to do. Like, well, what? <laughs> I was surprised too. I could be wrong about his reasoning for not wanting to do it, but he says he wants to learn more about it before he does it. Possibly, I don't know exactly, but I was flabbergasted when he said right. he didn't want to do it. So fuck him. We're gonna do <laughs> well, it. I'll do it while we're camping, and we're gonna. I will let you guys know yeah. if anything happens. But I'm up for trying it. They got a nap too, so you, with all the directions and everything that you need to do it. I'm. We're doing it. I'm yeah. sure Mark will do it with I us. I want to do it. We'll totally. get Brad to do it. He don't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even think he believes it. So he yeah, won't he'd, he'd be laughing probably. Yeah. But. <laughs> but yeah. Um, that's it. Yeah, that's it for this episode. We're, <laughs> we're looking at 25 minutes, 26 looking minutes. Good. So we're close to 30. Like we said, we're, we're pushing for 30, and we'll see how that works out with this format. And we'll have more stories from uh, relatives and friends and 
like we said before, we want uh, your guys' experiences, the audience of Ales and Tales. Um, this is only our first episode, so obviously we don't have any from you guys. But if you have anything you want to send it in, we can almost guarantee it will be on the podcast. Yeah, pretty much. So if you want your experience shared, this is a good avenue to go about doing that. We'll have a Facebook up here soon, probably a Twitter. Yeah, Twitter, YouTube. Uh, maybe we'll post uh, video footage of some of our investigations. We both work full time, so we got to work between yeah. our schedules and see how that works. <laughs> and then we also want to touch on weird news. We uh, really didn't do our homework on that on that for this episode, but in the future, if there's enough weird news, we'll have a segment about that. Yep. And, sure, uh, you know what's going on in the weird, strange world yeah. around us? <laughs> so we'll try and get that going for you guys, and let us know how we're doing, what you want to hear, what you don't want to hear. Tales and, and strange tales. The letter N. Strange Tales. Gmail.com. Let us know, and thanks for tuning in. We'll talk to you next week. Cheers. Cheers.